Who knows how many towns they are going to restart? This one seems good though. Nine villagers for each player. Perfect. There we go. That's the start that we want to see from the get-go. <laughs> now imagine in the first two games, Slam had a fantastic map generation with all the resources on the back, and now he's got all the resources forward. To be fair though, these resources are very unlikely to get spotted by scouts, even going along the walls and even in the castle age, even with castle age vision. So let's take a look at some of it. We're just gonna need to wait. Uh, we know how this goes in Arena. We can talk about how the Civilization matchup can play out in the future. But uh, let's start actually with... Let's actually go for the SIP bonuses first. Then we're going to talk about the map generation. Then we can speculate. So for both these Civilizations, right? Snap's going to play with Ethiopians. So he gets extra resources for free upon reaching a new age, which is very strong. 200 resources, 100 food, 100 gold. As well as faster attacking archers as well. His Civilization, he's got... Pretty strong siege as well. Ethiopians has the entire blacksmith. Uh, sorry, not the entire blacksmith. He's got the uh, entire siege workshop. So he's got Bombard Cannon, Siege Ram, uh, Siege Onagers as well. Heavy, uh, heavy Scorpions, right? So it's not a common thing. And yeah, besides that, Ethiopians also get the Pikeman upgrade for free. They, they do have a bunch of bonuses over here which are going to be very valuable. On top of that, we'll see for the team bonus for them, extra line of sight and apples and towers. I, I don't think that's going to come to play necessarily too much. Meanwhile, taking a look down south over here for... Or actually up north for Dobbs. He's playing with kills, which is going to give him a variety of things. First off, the priority in herdable conversion is not going to be relevant on this map or any maps that are going to be like this, close start. And basically, he doesn't really have the ability to go for and steal any herdables. And it's not something that we see people make use of with kills too much. But uh, on top of that, he does have faster working lumberjacks. He does have faster moving infantry units as well. And then besides that, for the team bonus, he's going to have with guilds faster working siege workshops. Uh, one bonus that I forgot to mention was the faster attacking siege weapons, which is pretty good. And that's about it. Now, for the map generation, this is what I find very interesting, though, Slam. This time around, is getting all the resources forward. So if we take a look, the goal over here is forward, kind of exposed. This goal is not necessarily exposed, mind you, but it's also forward. So both these goals are forward. Plus the stone over here is kind of forward as well. So it's not really the best. And there we have extra stone outside. We have extra gold over here, two additional golds in the stone over here, which means that if we were to see potentially like one castle drop, I don't think it's going to happen given just how little space there is over here, but just for hypotheticals, right? If we were to see a castle drop over here from Dobbs, he would be able to end up denying basically so much. Yeah, he would end up denying this. He would end up denying this as well as this this make it very hard to get access to this as well right so uh yeah if we take a look up in the north Dobbs map generation seems to be a lot better he does have the gold on the back over here over here fantastic as well and then the stone is kind of forward so we could see a similar situation over here if it was slammed the one to come forward with pressure which i don't think we are going to see anyone go and drop castle but still interesting to see just in terms of how the maps are being generated over here. One castle from Slam could potentially end up denying this, this, and this. But not on the golds on the back, so these are in a fantastic position for for Dobbs. Village coming up for Slam. He's going up on 21 villagers, 22 population. He's going to take advantage of the extra resources he gets for free. As a matter of fact, he's not going for gold miners whatsoever. So... He'll be on his way to the castle age very, very shortly, while Dobson, on the other hand, is going to have to go for a more standard kind of build over here. However, he's going up on 27 population, though, which is one villager. You know, this uh, is really interesting from Dobbs. And I think Slam's probably going to try and make a play for economy over here, while Dobbs going to try and make a play for aggression. In the castle, not in the castle, it's actually he might be thinking of going for a fast aim kind of approach over here because he gets 15% faster working lumberjacks. He does not need quite as many villagers if he wanted to go for something like that, but I'm not really sure that's going to be his strategy. We'll see. 
For the actual matchup, though, Slam Civilization is going to have a not so secret weapon against uh, Dovsisk, which is access to Bombard Cannons, of course, especially if you end up going for something like Torch Engin Engines, so the Imperial Age unique tech for Ethiopians. Those BBCs can be so strong. The blast radius is fantastic, and it can make a siege play from Dobbs kind of difficult. And uh, besides siege, Dobbs going to have, well, Paladin are not going to work right. We have for Ethiopians access to Halberdier, and he gets the pikeman upgrade for free, so it's not very expensive to get to Halberdier. And then besides that, he's going to have Wall Raiders, for which Slam is going to have his own counter going for Shot the Warriors themselves. So I'm really not sure. Uh, I, I think I'm liking Slam Civilization over here a little bit better. We'll see. Slam's builds and arenas are nice. That was making a play for Castle H map control. All right. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense, actually. He does have the stable up over here, so it's not going to be a fast imp. Usually we see players go on 28 up to the Fuel Age. When they are thinking of going fast imp over here, but for Kelts, I'm really sure that'll be the play for, for him. Unless he was able to go for a castle as well on his way up to the Imperial Age or something. But yeah, he's got the stable over here, so it's going to be scouts indeed. And once he gets to the field to the castle age rather, he's gonna try and make a play for the relics. So that's a good eye, yes. Speaking of which, where are the relics? Damn, Slam already got to <laughs> freaking Castle Age. Sam's probably going to be satisfied with one or two relics. He doesn't really have right now a, a monastery. And what's going on over here? It seems like Slam locked the gate and forgot to unlock it. Now he's trying to go out with the scout and the scout's just dancing. Yeah. Seems about right. Shake the booty. How long is this going to go for? Slam's not realizing about it. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, 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 the time is not really working. Does he have... So he does have vision, he knows where all the relics are. The scout's like noping. There we go! <laughs> he realized, but now the scouts are already out for dubs. And he'll get to the castle age very soon. Stan's been able to go for two additional TCs. Right now, his economy doesn't really allow for him to queue from all three TCs, but he still managed to get a two villager lead and he's making a play for farms right now, so eventually he'll be able to keep production going. Meanwhile, Dov's got the second TC on the way. Yeah, with the scouts already out, four scouts for Dov's. He's just trying to keep an eye on all the relics. He's gotta keep, yes, I was gonna say he needs to keep a, a scout on the right hand side as well so that he at the very least prevents. Slam from collecting the two relics that are closer to his base. Meanwhile, Dobbs on the other hand's got one. Two relics that are closer to his base, and then this one is kinda contested, but it's also a little bit closer to Dobbs's base. Monastery is already up as well for the red player. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Slam will be able to. to get any of the relics at all. He's not even going for a monastery whatsoever. But he did manage to get uh, almost enough villagers on food that he'll be able to keep production from all three TCs. Just needs, needs to go for a few extra farms. And Dobbs, on the other hand, he's on four food workers, so it's not the best. He does have some resources stacked up still, so he can keep uh, the TCs working. He can queue the two TCs he's got right now available to train villagers, but eventually he's going to need actually extra farms, of course. Yo, Rosa! How are you doing? Mr. Turf, Turfus Maximus, how are you doing? Welcome back. Long time no siege, man. Long time no siege. I hope you're doing well. I don't think it's gonna be possible for him to deny the relic over here. Yeah, the scout's going down. And the mob goes down! But the relic's already inside. Wait, is it? Yeah, it's right here behind the gate. But this is really good. Now Dobbs got full map control and he'll be able to eventually connect, collect all five relics, which looks fantastic. Run the mail if you as well. Hi, hi, welcome. What is that? It's so small, it's very hard to see. I see it's a Doubt Angel. It's animated as well, right? Yeah. Team Secret though. Hmm. It needs to get updated. 
Have internet at house finally one year later. Dude, you've been without internet for one year? How are you still alive? How are you, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. A lot has happened. Uh, I think you might be aware of most of it, right? I think you, you might have dropped around one of the RMS Cup 2 streams, perhaps? That's been that's been quite the experience. Better Nova Duos, of course. And you see that I have an audio setup goal right now? Well, I'm hoping I'll be able to get an audio interface with this, as well as a new microphone and headphones. And hopefully, that's going to allow me to hook up the guitar to the computer and get some, some music recorded. I've tried to come back to playing guitar and I've been practicing for the last two weeks or so. Seahorse Gallop! Thank you so much for the resub as well. Coming in at 22 months, so two months away from two full years already. And I'm doing well, thank you so much. I hope you are doing well yourself as well. I'm doing much better ever since I uh, got sick for the RMS Cup 2's final weekend. Talk about bad luck. The ever since I got sick for that one. I've been able to recover for the most part. Yes. The nasty pressure over here from Dobbs as well. 25% faster attacking C trip and so. He's got three manas over here. He did kind of fall behind the villager count though, a little bit. Well, quite a bit actually. This time it's 12 villagers ahead. Both players already have wheelbarrow and Snam's going for handcart, so his economy is going to be so much stronger over here. We'll see if he'll be able to defend himself. It's going to be pretty difficult. In the Castle Age, there's nothing about Slam's Siege that's going to be any better compared to Dobbs's. As a matter of fact, it's going to be much worse because of the faster attacking rate for the Kelts. If he was able to get to the Imperial Age at some point, of course, that would be much better for him with access to Torsion Engines. He might be able to hold on against Siege no problem, but he will need a castle. He is going for the castle right now. But yeah, he will also need to get to the Imperial Age, which is going to be much easier said than done, given all the pressure that he's under. Dove's coming over here, though! Oh, the Mavener shot's going to be a 1-1 trade! And Dove's realizes about the castle over here, but that was... I'm not really sure if that was a strategic trade over here for Slam or not. Now he's going to go for another one. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. Getting the mango traits over here allows Nam to get the castle up. If he did not have the mango traits over there, the mountains from Dobbs would have come forward and would have denied the castle. So that was really well played from Slam. Now he's getting close to having enough resources to click up to the Imperial Age. And while Dobbs is in a similar situation, that was a very good trade, by the way. Eh, yeah. Almost no HP left on this one. But uh, yeah, well, that was a. Well, well, they are both in a similar situation in terms of resources. Slam's economy is so much stronger. And yeah, once again, I'm hoping that he'll be able to go for. He's got Shot the Warriors coming out, which is great. After all, we talked about the potential for military for Doves and, you know, beyond World Raiders and Siege in the Imperial Age Guilds are not really going to have too many other options. Paladin are going to be available, but once again, it's not the best because of the lack of upgrades and the fact that Slam is going to have a pretty cheap transition into Halberdier, so it's probably just going to be. Well, he's bringing monks into the mix, which are not good for, for Kelts. Not in this matchup, anyway. He does not get redemption. Mm, I don't think he gets block printing, either. So, even if he if he had redemption, he wouldn't be able to do anything against Slam's Siege. So, once Slam gets to Torsion Engines, Bombard Cannons, and Shuttle Warriors to defend his Siege with as well, that's going to be so good. Go, Kelts! Nice! Looking forward to hearing some audio interface, Noah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to getting back in shape, you know? I've been practicing for the last two weeks, I think. Is it, has it been two weeks already? I'm not sure. Maybe a week and a half or so. And I'm trying to get back in shape, man. Before that, I didn't play for years, actually. So I'm just trying to get back in shape first and then pick it from there. And looking forward to finally achieving my musical goals. Just wants to deter Sam from attacking his siege camp with his shuttles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's... I, I, I'm not really sure he's gonna be able to do too much. Interesting to see Sam go for... Archer Rangers over here. He's going for crossbows. 
Well, you know, Arbalesters and Bombard Cannons, I guess, could also work as well if you do a good job with your unit control. And that, that was a really good trade from Slam, by the way. He got so many Scorpions over here. But yeah, if you do a good job with your Bombard Cannons and protect your Arbalesters against the possibility of Onagers, I guess that could potentially work, but it seems a little bit riskier. We'll see. Hey, May Bear! Welcome back as well. Long time no see you. I hope you're doing well. University coming up now for Slam as well. So he could see chemistry and well he can some he can need to right for BBC. So far dal has been able to catch up in Villager Count. He didn't need to go for 4 TCs though. Now he's got a second castle coming up and he's got Wall Raider production. I'm always around lurking. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, very soon you're going to have a... an emote <laughs> for that. I have already commissioned a bunch of emotes. I'm just waiting for the artists to have them ready. Nova Lurk is one of those. Yeah, good unit control over here for Slam. He's got the Arbalester upgrade. He's got... He doesn't really have Bracer yet. He's going for Chemistry, which is still going to be pretty good. Not the extra range, but it's going to be extra attack anyway. And the mana control over there is pretty good for Dust, but he's unable to get any units down over here. So Slam's looking strong. A much higher military count. He's got still a comparable villager count despite Dust going for extra TCs. So things are looking pretty good for Slam. Now he's coming in. He's got capped ramps. Thumbring on the way. Your voice is lower than usual. Is your throat recovered? Mm, 95% there, 97% there. It's not fully recovered, but it's also probably because of the very long streams from the weekend. For Saturday and Sunday. For the Red Bull qualifiers. Snap forgot about Bracer? Seems so. That's the only explanation for why he's not gone for it. I mean, he's got the resources. And he's gone for chemistry. Usually you go for Bracer and then you go for chemistry. Unless he was trying to prioritize Mumbar Cannon. But he's got on chemistry and he's not going for BBC. So it doesn't seem to be the case. Very nice raid over here from Dobbs. He's getting a bunch of villages down over here. I still think the castle over here is going to end up coming up. Or at the very least it should. But it's going to require some extra villages from Slam. Imagine if he had actually had Bracer though. Lower and register, not volume. Yes, yes, yes. When my, you know, when I have horse voice, it goes lower in pitch. So that, that certainly makes sense given the very long streams that we had during the weekend. I'm not really sure if he forgot about Q and BBC. What is going on over here? Slam doesn't seem to be in his element. You know, it was. Pretty rough during the Red Bull qualifiers, and now no Bracer, no Bombard Cannons. And I, I I don't think he forgot about queuing them up, I just don't think he's going for them at all. Is he waiting for Torsion Engines before going for the units? Well, Bombard Cannons over here wouldn't make sense given the units that Dobbs is going for in any case. So, it's fine. But Bracer is, yeah, he's going for it now. Bracer is absolutely instrumental, and ideally he would want to go for Shadow Warriors, which we were talking about earlier in the in the game. He's deleting the castle over here, just going to try and relocate it elsewhere. Wait, did he delete it actually, or did the castle get destroyed? <gasps> he, oh my lord, he lost the castle! Take a look at this stone! What is going on with Sam? Dude, he, oh, he lost the castle. I thought he was going to relocate him, then I saw the stone and I was like, wait a moment. Seriously, what is going on with Slam? He seems to be kind of out of it. Yeah. No one's just coming in for Dubs. No, he's got an elite world raider. He's got only forging right now. No iron casting or blast furnace yet. So Slam could potentially get a pretty decent trade over here. Let me take a look. No elite for Slam. He was saving a bunch of resources. I wasn't really sure if it was going to be for um, torsion engines or maybe 
Elite Bolt Radius, he's not going for either. <laughs> Just got 23 Arbalesters queued up, and it, 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 I, I don't know, it seems kind of rough. He doesn't like getting the Trebuchet down, though, at the very least. That's good. Rough voice. Yes. There we go. That's a lot of old raiders coming over. Tom shot the warriors, but still, production has not been quite as high. Slan needs to go for royal heirs. I don't think he's gone for it. He's kind of struggling for production. Okay, he's been saving resources up once again. What is this for? Is it going to be for elite? Is it going to be for royal heirs? Is it going to be for torsion engines? Conscription and chainmail armor coming up. All right. Beautiful. Already a trebuchet is out for Dobbs forward, so he's gonna start targeting the castle. I'm going to take a look in the game to see if Snam's gone for any of the things that I'm talking about because I am not 100% sure. So, Slam has not gone for Royal Airs, he's not gone for Elite Shuttle Warriors, and he's not gone for Torsion Engines either. So I am not 100% sure what he's been saving the resources for. He's going for upgrades only. Plate mail armor coming out right now. Which is going to help a little bit. These shuttle warriors were getting just melted by the world raiders. And he's been able to stabilize. Now the game's looking kind of competitive compared to before. That's a lot of world raiders coming over again. That's uni. Uni unit, mono unit, army composition over here is... Very hard for Slant to deal with, at the very least, given his current army composition as well. So yeah, that was actually doing a lot of damage over here. Doesn't that get him the castle down as well? What's going on in the east? It's just getting pushed away. Uh, yeah, there's a random tower from Dubs. Probably just trying to prevent any Arbalists from coming up and doing any damage, perhaps. But yeah, not too much action over there. For the most part, it's going to happen all over here. There's a fourth castle coming up now for Dubs as well. The second castle for Slam. Third castle, that's going to be the second total, of course. And the market abuse is real from Slam. <laughs> He's just trashing himself. <laughs> Absolutely. Another building going down, and here comes Dobbs once again. Scary amount of old raiders with the castle not up just yet. These arbalesters are not really getting too much support from here. And now it's going for bombard cannons now against world raiders. It's not what he needs. And once again, a lot of resources. Slam doesn't really seem to know exactly what to go for. He's not going for the upgrades. He's struggling. Yeah, he just calls a GG over here. Well, that was really well played from Dobbs. He doesn't have taken game number one, right? So that's going to be 1-0 and over here. And Slam's kind of struggling. Slam's a very strong arena player, mind you. I have seen him do really, really well in the past. As a matter of fact, I think he's gotten quite far in many of the previous Master of Arena editions. If not, full stop won a whole thing. I'm not really sure if he won any of those, but I am very sure that Slam's a, a strong arena player over here. He just seems so out of his element. Not really sure what to go for at all times. Dubs KD is fantastic. Approaching a 4 to 3 KD ratio, we take a look at the economy, it's much stronger for Dubs as well. In the end, it's up collecting about 3,600 extra resources. And for society, a higher work account, especially towards the end of the game, he was going to start pulling ahead even further as well. So, well played. Let's go back. There we are. Let's go. 45 clearing. This is a an interesting one. This clearing is significantly different compared to so, compared to the clearing that I've been used to, but to be fair, there were two maps, two different map styles with clearing, with a clearing name, right, that were kind of different. So this is going to be one of the variations. This time around is going to have this 
layout. It's very similar to what we saw during Terranova Duos for Arena Exception. I don't know if you remember that one. It was part of the Asian map pool for Terranova Duos. And yeah, it's it's kind of the same layout. The difference is that the center terrain is a little bit different. I, I don't remember if for Arena Exception we had any elevations. I think the map was completely flat. So we do have some differences over here. Albeit very small. Uh, just the elevations at the center, different terrain type and... For everything else, it seems like it's about the same. Anyway, for these civilizations, Mongols and Burgundians, we have a pretty strong civilization for Slam, but an absolute powerhouse of the late game from Dobbs as well. So we'll see what we get. There are different timings for both these civilizations. Slam is going to have a pretty strong castle age, potentially even uh, late castle early in, but maybe even the later stages of the... Imperial Age, it could be really good for them because of a, vari a variety of reasons, right? They can have Burgundian vineyards uh, impacting their economy, even if it's going to be a somewhat subtle boost, it's still going to be pretty good. Plus, they have always the potential to go for Flemish Revolution. Now, Mongols, on the other hand, though, Mongols are absolutely nutty. Fantastic Siege, one of the strongest unique units in the game as well with the Mangdai. And, of course, they are going to try to make a play for for the later stages. Otherwise, if the map was open, maybe Mongols would also have a little bit of a power spike in the field age because of being able to go up faster because of the faster working hunters. But besides that, I think it's going to be pretty standard over here and both players will probably just play this for... Like, we are going to get a, a longer game over here. It's unlikely we are going to see any aggression coming up earlier. Regardless, Walls coming out for Dobbs on the left-hand side. Interesting. And I'm really curious as to what Slam's strategy is for this map. This is his home map. So whatever he's got planned up over here. Yeah, I can uh, I can wonder what it is. Is he going to go for walls on the right-hand side as well at some point? He deleted the wall over here, but I think it was probably just to get the boar in. Mm. Yeah, you know, he could easily go for something over here. Take a look at Slam. Slam, on the other hand, has not really gone for any extra walls. As a matter of fact, he hasn't even deleted a single layer, or a single tile, rather. I think. Yeah, so he's looking a little bit better. There we are. Beautiful. So, let's check. Both players should have enough to go up to the fuel age already. They are going up on about the same economy. We have a few extra villages queued up actually for Dove, so... Yeah, it makes me wonder. Could potentially make a similar play compared to what we saw in the previous map, right? Just go on a stronger economy and try to play for map control. Slam, on the other hand, is going up already to the fuel age and 25 population, so he's just going to go for a standard fast castle over here. This could be really good for Dubs. We'll see. Once he gets to the fuel age, we'll see if he doesn't end up going for the stable. Speaking of which, the relics over here are going to be different compared to your standard arena map, right? So, this time around, we have two relics, three relics actually, which are kind of favorite in So We have this one over here, this one over here, and this one over here. All these are closer to Slam, significantly so by quite a bit over here if we take a look to the nearest point to the gate and then potentially to a imaginary monastery let's say that he goes for a monastery over here right yeah it's much closer for him meanwhile the red player on the other hand is going to have this one which is closer to his base but this one is kind of contested like it's technically closer still to top space For sure. Yeah, let's say that he goes for a monastery over here. This one is still going to be closer. Compared to blue, for sure, that's going to be the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, this one could potentially get contested. Especially if Stam is the first player to go to the next stage.
We have additional relics outside though. One that's closer to Dobbs, one that's closer to Slam. But once again, <laughs> it seems like the ones that are closer to Slam are so much closer. Not only the center ones, but this one is also so much closer to his base compared to this one being closer to Dobbs' base. Regardless though, Fiolic is here and yeah, Dobbs is going for the stable over here. So he will make a play for map control for game number two as well. And he might end up getting all five relics over here. At the very least, the center relics in any case. And Stan might end up just getting um, left or being left on this one only. Malay, Teutons, Burgundians, Bohemian, Turks, Poles, all the best. They're pretty strong. Um, Poles, are, Poles are a very interesting case as well because they were not really very highly rated by top clowns, by pro clowns. But they do remarkably well in lower elos. And also they do really well when there is a higher elo player at the very top utilizing Poles. Even against clowns if the pole player is a little bit higher level as well, so it's actually turned out to be pretty strong. There we go, Castellate is coming out for both. A little bit sooner for Sam. Yeah, he's got Spearman coming out, so he doesn't really want to be left on the same position from before. I think the arguably is the key word over there. I wouldn't really dare classify in the civilizations myself, given that even pro players cannot seem to agree. Alright. Yeah, the speedmen are working so much better over here for Slam. Compared to the previous game, now he is not completely out of out of the map, right? So he gets to the Castle Age the first, he's going to go for a TC in the Monastery right away. He doesn't really have enough to go for the third TC, but he's going to have enough very soon. Meanwhile, Dobbs on the other hand is going to go for a Siege Workshop in the Monastery. go. Light Cavalry is coming in for Dobbs. And the monks already queued up for both players. I'm really sure who's getting this uh, faster actually. Let me check. I think it might be a little bit sooner for... Yeah, for Dobbs. Yo! Lottie Karate! Thank you so much for the reset with Prime Gaming as well, which I absolutely love. Coming in at three months. That's the first trimester. So we are going to get there. <laughs> Eventually, but thank you so much for your support. It's very much appreciated and welcome. Welcome back. Hope you're enjoying By the way, I have some news For those of you interested in playing and in having your games cast There's an announcement coming out very soon Most likely early next week for a community tournament for players up to 1k elo so keep that in mind if you like to have me cast your games in the channel and participate for a little bit of prize money but mostly the tournament experience certainly keep an eye on aoe zone and on my discord server as well if that's something that you're interested in community tournaments right uh join my discord go to the roles channel and assign yourselves the community tournament role so you get notified every time that I host a community tournament. There we go. Time to get that elo. Let's go! <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. It's been fun before. We already had a few in the past. The Open Elo Cups series. Uh, now we are going to enter a new age the community tournaments it's going to have a different name and it's going to have a different format as well 
Down the south, we see Dubs go for the 30 Cs, Lance got the 30 Cs. So far, it's been really neck and neck. The relic distribution is pretty even as well, one relic for each player. And now the second relic's coming in as well for Dubs, so that's going to be two. While Slam, on the other hand, he's bringing the second relic in himself, I think. Yes, he's got the monk over here, so this one's still up for grabs. But it should go in favor of Slam, actually. He doesn't even need to take the engagement over here. Could potentially just send the monks and go and collect it. I'm not really sure why he's not going for it. Now he's risking losing the monks. Which doesn't seem good. He's going out to the Light Cavalry, but he'll get cleaned up. Yeah, even with the conversion over there, it's not worth it. The Spearman going down over here. The Light Cavalry still staying up. Oh! Actually, the Spearman over there survives. The crosses do a good amount of damage from behind lines. But yeah, this relic's still going to be up for grabs and Slam doesn't seem like he's going to have this one guaranteed. Let me take a look at the scout and information from board players to see if they know about the outer relics. Slam's got no idea. And Dobbs, Dobbs has already scouted the round, so he has scouted his own relic. Outside and he's going after it. So it's looking a little bit better for Dubs over here And I am not really sure what Slam's plan is For this game. Once again, I imagine he came with something prepared I'm just not really sure what it is and I don't see anything over here that kind of screams Unique strat from Slam or something out of the box. It just seems to be very standard for the most part He's going for a stable now as well He's already been in the castle age for a while Going for Cavalier now, right, it's not particularly early. We might have gotten screwed by the map generation issues for game number one and by the fact that the players took a little a little while to get here. Um, I'm not really sure if we'll be able to cover a full set in between this one and the next one because the next one starts in 43 minutes, well, technically. So... Yeah, I am not, yeah, I'm not too sure we are going to have enough, actually. Will we? Probably not. We'll probably be able to just go for one game and then we're going to have to finish casting it after the second series takes place live. Similar to how we did on Friday, I think. I'm big back and forth, though, because the kids, does this map have six relics? No, no, this map has seven relics. So far, it's three to three, but there is the seventh relic up for grabs over here for Slam still. The engagement coming up with the center. Slam is bringing villagers over here. He's got almost enough resources to go for a castle, so he'll try to castle drop. Good amount of crossbows over here still. Very good. And he goes for the castle. At the center, though, not too aggressive. He wouldn't be able to do too much, though, by going for a castle drop very close to the walls from Dubs, to be fair. He would only be able to deny one of the golds over here, or potentially one of the stones on the left-hand side, but... Yeah, we still have a lot of extra resources for Dubs in the back, with back gold, back stone... And, yeah, he's got extra gold over here as well. Hand cards coming in now for Slam as well. Pretty strong economy. And he's off to the Imperial Age. This is really strong. Dust should be on his way to the Imperial Age very soon as well. The economy is looking already fantastic for Slam. We didn't really talk about the civilization bonuses too much over here, but one of the things that Slam gets with Burgundians that's going to make his economy so strong is the fact that he gets access to eco upgrades 1 H earlier for a 50% foot discount as well, so. Early on, uh, we saw him probably take a little bit longer to get to the next stage, but he was able to go for the eco upgrades one inch earlier, which is great. Right now, he's not really taking advantage of it. I don't see two Mansaw coming up, or crop rotation for that matter, but... Yeah, he's still in a pretty decent position. Let me take a look at the gather economy time. I imagine it's probably higher for Slam so far. Yeah, not by a little. It's uh, higher by a lot! 50 minutes higher for Slam so far. It's falling behind the village account a little bit. Just barely. 
Uh, but it's of course also partly due to the fact that he's going out to the Imperial Age, so he's got only two TCs to keep villagers with. Meanwhile, Dobbs only now going out to the Imperial Age. He was on four TCs. He could keep uh, keep on queuing villagers from all four up until now. That was already thinking of going for. Yeah. Archery. And yeah, slam on the other hand. It's got stone archer and just coming up skirmishers, and cavalry archers coming up for slamming for dobs. That was gets twenty five percent faster attacking cavalry archers as a civilization bonus for the Mongols. So it makes sense for him to go for cavalry archers, but slam is already thinking of of countering that right away. There we are. Trebuchet on the way as well. Hey guys! You could one day try playing live dynamic music for games instead of casting them? Interesting experiment. Live dynamic music. Wait a moment, are you... What What do you mean, like, um... Th there is one thing that I've been thinking of for the stream for quite a while. If you've been playing any modern games, you might have realized just how important audio has become. And how important adaptive, as you're saying. I, I, I guess that's probably what you're in, uh, referring to, right? Like, adaptive soundtracks have become for games. So if you played Age of Empires 4, the music has a certain ambience to it. And once you start fighting, the music changes. That's something that I've been thinking of ways to implement in Age of Empires 2 for my stream. Are you talking about that? Like, just playing music? Probably not casting, but just playing music according to how the game is looking? Or are you talking about, like, playing live music, like guitar or something? Hmm. Playing it myself, right. Yeah, that's an interesting experiment, actually. <laughs> For the 1,000 suggestions you have made before, which are usually ridiculous in nature, this actually is a... is actually a one suggestion that I would honestly think of pursuing. Yeah, yeah. Music to fake the action. That's something that I want to do for my stream at some point. I still need to figure out how, but... For playing guitar live, potentially the other instruments if I ever get access to and learn how to play. Yeah, that'd be cool. Good pressure slam. Twice the military count right now compared to Dobbs, and Dobbs has not really been able to get too many cavalry archers up just yet. He does have one castle on the back, though. So he's not thinking of going for Magda. What is Toss' plan here? He's got Bracer now. Magnil's coming out. I, I think he's got just the one. Oh, no. He does have more than one siege works. He's got two. Three, actually. Use your fit to control the camera while you play guitar with your hands. If we have an auto-spectate feature where a capture just moves to where the action is, that'll be... That'd be pretty good. That's 50% what I do. <laughs> AI rendering people out of jobs. Anyway. Fantastic armor composition over here for Snap. He's got Custier. He's got Skirmishers. There we are. And now, Dobbs is going for Drills. Onager. But this just seems so late because you are getting an incredible surround over here on the cavalry archers. Plus, the skimmers just coming over as well to finish them off whenever they try to get to a choke point. They're going to be so effective, and that is a great attack round, though, from Dobbs. But still, Slav's position is so much stronger that Dobbs is prompted into calling a GG right away, and this is not something that I would expect to, to happen at this stage. Like, like I, I was not expecting Dobbs to be going for this this game, but in the end, Slam makes his own push work so much better over here. Does a really good job. Incredibly strong civilization over here. Both Mongols and Burgundians. And Burgundians specifically on arena-like maps are so strong. Slam takes game number two, and we are going to get a full set. Thus, 
we're probably gonna have to jump into the next set live from the get-go and we're probably not going to have enough time to go for the recorded set that I was hoping to get in between this and the next one so yeah that has that let's just summarize its quality by saying they're using dedicated observers in major tournaments yes that's what we get for land tournaments in Age of Empires 2 as well with Mapu. But that's something that I always dreamt of for Age of Empires 2, but it's beyond, well, my reach. And I'm not really sure if anyone who's who would have that within their reach is actually agreeing with me. But I would love to have an actual team of people with, at the very least, two observers and a director. So the observers are just tracking different things actively. The director asks the observers to track specific things, and then the director is going to switch between the different views from the observers. That is something that is very common in other esports, but so far has proven kind of beyond the reach of what's possible for Age of Empires 2, or at the very least what people have been willing to go for. That's something that I would love to, to, to have, but uh, it's, you know, I do not really have the financial power to to do it. Anyway, for this game, the achievements are looking pretty one-sided. Slam does end up getting a better than 3 to 2 KD ratio for economy. We have a stronger economy for Slam as well, with about 4,000 extra resources, which just speaks volumes about Burgundian's economy in these maps, of course, and their potential for, for having good games because of that. Even if Slam fell behind the village account towards the end of the game by a little bit. And I think he wasn't really ahead by too long. So I think for the most part, Doves had extra villagers compared to Slam, but Slam's eco upgrades also allowed him to collect extra resources despite that. Let's go back. Okay, there we go. The game's coming up. And Vikings, Spanish available. So we see Spanish for Doves in Slam's cat poles. Will enable predictions for game number three as well for five minutes. We are catching up. There we go. We are completely live right now. So, option one. Who wins game number three? Option one is going to be Slam. Option two is going to be Dubs. The predictions are open for five minutes and go nuts. I do have to say it's nice to have the ones with the money to make those dreams a reality at a comfortable distance. They make unfun demands in return. <laughs> yeah, we'll... Uh... If I ever got to to be as large as I would need to be for me to go for something like that, I would certainly pursue it. I think it would increase the quality of tournaments by quite a bit. Have at the very least two observers. In team games, you probably would want to have more than two, perhaps. A director. And, and then the casters, right? I think that would be absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. What do you think about the new feature from Capture Age, by the way, of having the flags over here by the player's name? I like it. I probably would like it a little bit better if it followed the shape of the scoreboard, so it was if it was masked. Yeah, I would probably like it a little bit better, but it's whatever. It's still pretty good. Regardless, though. <laughs> I see turnip. Well, I, I do strive to increase the quality of my streams. I did spend a lot of time implementing this overlay and the annotations and all the features that we have, but I, I hope I still qualify as a passion stream. I am quite, quite passionate. And I'm still uh, striving for production quality. There are a bunch of things that I have in my pipeline in the pipeline so to say that it's going to take a long time for me to implement but eventually it's going to take the production quality to a whole new level things that you haven't seen before anywhere else even massive streams anyway getting back into this game Dobbs playing with Spanish he's already making a play for stone over here this is going to be pretty standard this is something that we see on Haida whenever we see Spanish just a play for castle H into castle drop into conquistadors it's pretty standard on the right hand side, Slam is playing with Pulse. So he's going up to the Fuel H on 
yeah, 21 villages, and he's sending already villages forward in militia. So this is going to be a pretty standard strat from Poles on hideout. They're just going to trash. That's uh, what we have seen be the case probably 90% of the times that I have seen the civilization on this map. Das is going to expect this, and we'll see if he'll be able to react in time. We'll see if he'll be able to prevent this from preventing him from getting to the castle. It's because the whole point of Snap's push over here is... Obviously, ideally, he wants to do some damage, and maybe if he can get the villager or two down, that'd be ideal. But, the whole point of this is force a reaction from Dubs, delay Dubs' castle time, and not only castle time in terms of the castle age, but castle time in terms of the actual castle. So, if he can force a few towers, for instance, from Dubs, that'd be already worth it for Slam. But we'll see. So far, Dubs' reaction is fantastic. He's got extra houses, and the palace are coming up. Yeah, yeah, I, I get your point. Passion fruit of Argentina. <laughs> I love it. I'm already working towards trying to grow a, a little bit more. You might have noticed the YouTube channel get active once again. Which resulted actually in a bunch of unsubs. <laughs> but I was expecting that to be the case. You know, for a channel to go from being doorman to polishing two, three videos per day that are from three months old games. Yeah, I was expecting it to have an impact, but after that's done, it's going to get better. Good reaction over here. Still though, Slam getting past the second layer of walls over here, the houses. Is incredible. Now the tower is coming up and it's going to end up pushing Dubs away from the berries over here. So Dubs' reaction was timely, but it was not strong enough. And Slam's already getting away with this. Check this out. Towers pushing Dubs away from the berries over here is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. And then we could potentially see more towers come up over here. So first off, Slam's gonna try and breach through. If he's able to take the house down over there, then he'll be able to keep on going for more towers. However, there is another tower coming up for uh, Dubs over here. This one is going to be beyond the range of the tower from Slam. And it's going to prevent Slam from going for any extra towers like around here, for instance, right? So this is good. And Slam's going to be forced into going for... Let's say... Yeah, the extra tower is going to be on the left-hand side, right? So he's going around, and I guess he's probably going to try to get to this area if he can. Especially if he can send the scout forward and spot. Yeah, and the spot, spot the stone over there. This could be good. And he's keeping this open. He's going to have to go for the tower over here, though, I think, because of the gate. Yeah. And we'll see another tower coming up over here. This Once again, this is exactly what Slam was playing for. And it's paying off. Dobbs does not have the means to go for a... Well, I mean, once he clicks out to the castle age, assuming that he actually gets the resource to go for the second building, he might still manage to get enough stone to eventually go for the castle once he gets to the castle age, but this is delaying him significantly. He's got the resources, he doesn't have the buildings, and he would have been able to go out to the castle age so much earlier if it weren't because of Snaps' push. And the great thing about Slam's push over here as well, Slam's push, sorry, over here is that even if Dubs gets to the castle age, and even if Dubs gets the castle up, Dubs is probably going to be forced into dropping the castle inside zone base, so he won't be able to go forward and put any pressure, and he'll probably end up going for a castle over here, perhaps, so that he can take eventually the towers down, but that's about it. Sam also one second TC only. Impressive. <laughs> you had to jinx it, didn't you? <laughs> but yeah, still even seven seconds is quite good. Especially in compared to the Dubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. So the house is going down over here and Dubs was able to wall slam in. So, Slam ends up losing all the villagers over here. He, he cannot keep on putting any pressure anymore. So, Dobbs' reaction over here was incredible. Well done. Trap the villagers. Trap the... Yeah. Trap the potential from Slam. The only thing that we have left for the bull player now has been the towers over here, which... 
won't really be able to do much of anything. The cast is coming out for both players. Slam is going up so much faster though. And check this out. He's got almost enough stone to go for the castle himself. So we're going to see a bunch of villagers coming forward from Slam. And he'll try to castle drop. And where's the castle going to come up? Well, it's to the TC, of course. Especially if he's going up so much faster compared to Dobbs. It's going to take some time for Dobbs to be able to go for a counter castle himself. So if we saw a castle come up anywhere from here to maybe here, right? Like... Mm, yeah, either either castle position over here will be very strong because you'll be able to target the TC. However, the one on the left hand side would end up also denying a lot of extra food economy. So I'll probably like to see something like that instead. Let's see, he gets to the castle and he goes for a siege workshop first. Interesting. Well, it's not going for anything. Or for the castle just yet. All right. And there we go. He's going for it on the right hand side. This is this is good. Yeah, he's right there. Good timing. This is still good. Uh, he'll still be able to deny some economy. Not too much. Just tr three farms, right? But the castle's still good. It's going to force a reaction from Dallas over here. Who's going to try and get the castle up himself. He does have 33% faster working builders, though. And he's going for a lot of villagers to get the castle up over here. But this castle's coming up no matter what. And the magnet's coming up right now. And Slav's pressure's looking great. Getting villagers down over here, delaying the castle quite a bit. Yeah, and you know what? This castle is not going to get denied, but it's going to come at a huge cost. Does it's going down to 19 villagers? How does it keep on going after this? Oh lord, the castle's up early for Sam, and a lot of villagers going down right now for Dos as well. Going down to 14, 13 population. The game is over already, despite both castles coming up. Dos going down to 11 villagers. Is gotta be quite rough for him. It's gotta feel pretty bad. And while he's not calling it just yet, there is no way on earth that's gonna be able to out trade Snap over here. Even if he got the castle down, even if he got away with the Pitar plays, Snap's got a much stronger economy right now. And obviously, with the Siege Workshop over here, going for rounds means that he's going to have the edge in damage output over here. Yeah, and does you know, he's trying to get the ram down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So long as the ram can actually keep on putting pressure against the castle, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pretty good defense over here for Sam. So, well, the castle will crumble for Dobbs. He's going to call the GG. Actually, he's just calling it right away. <laughs> this was not part of the plan. I bet it was not. So, Dobbs. He is going to call the GG over here. He says we'll play it in Slam. After a fairly rough start of the series, does end up taking the set over here with the final score of 2 to 1 with a technical reverse sweep against Dobbs. Uh, Slam moves on to the round of 16. Dobbs gets knocked out of the qualifiers. Let's go and take a look at the achievements one more time before jumping into the next set. What do we have? Well, we see for Slam. A wow, that's a 9 to 4k ratio, which is great for economy, a stronger economy for him as well, collecting about 3300 extra resources and for society, actually 2300 extra resources, sorry. And for society, a stronger economy, not only with a higher max villager count, but this was absolutely devastating for Doves. This area over here, really bad. You can see some momentum. From the blue player, of course. Yeah. And well played. What is that? The 30 seconds of, of death for Doves? 17.55. It was one minute. One minute and, and 10 seconds. Just full of nightmare for Doves. 